not hurry. <clears throat> not fun. I'm sure she's pretty upset about that, actually. Are, are we okay to get started with this? Mm. I'm texting her, but, but, you know, we can always take a pause like we've It'll be a little while until we get to the other. Okay. Yeah, we might as well start. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. We'll call our um, meeting to order. This is the City of Treasure Island City Commission meeting and uh, for Tuesday, January 4th. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, if you are joining us remotely on um, watching us online and you'd like to participate in our meeting, you can join the meeting from your computer, tablet, or smartphone by using GoToMeeting. And you can do that by visiting the website, global.gotomeeting.com slash join slash 411-128-349. Or you can dial in using your phone, using the phone number 571-317-3122, and using the access code 411-128-349. And if you're joining us on your computer, or laptop, um, or tablet, you can um, just message us in the chat if you'd like to comment on any of our agenda items and just let us know which item you'd like to speak on. And if you're joining us by phone, please keep yourself muted and just unmute yourself when you'd like to chime in when we call for public comment. With that, I'd like to ask everyone to please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ruth, if you can please take the roll call. Commissioner Toth? Here. Commissioner Doctor? Here. Commissioner Partridge? Not here yet. Commissioner Wetzel? Here. Mayor Payne? Here. Thank you. Okay, next is approval of regular and workshop agendas. Does anyone have any changes to our regular or workshop agendas for this evening? No. All right, hearing none, we'll move forward. Next is our proclamations, recognitions, and certificates of appreciation. This evening we have the opportunity to recognize some of our outstanding employees. Um, so first up is, you can come on up. First up is Lieutenant Dan Savaris our, from the police department. Um, so Lieutenant has been here for been with us for 15 years, so congratulations. And Chief, is there anything you'd like to say? Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, it's only a couple short months ago I had Lieutenant Staff Racy up here with promoting the rank of Lieutenant, which is the uh, number two spot in the TI Police Department. He's put in uh, over 15 years at TIPD, incredibly dedicated to our mission. Um, he has been invaluable to me in my first uh, couple years here. and. Uh, He's an invaluable asset to the city of Treasure Island. Like I said, he understands our mission. He's a go-getter. He never says no to anything, and uh, I wish him another 15, what do you want to do, 15, 20, 25 more years? Sure. Many, many, many more years here at Treasure Island, but uh, thank you, and I'm sure he appreciates this recognition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. All right, running back and forth. I'm going to get my steps in. 
Um, next is uh, Mark Santos, our IT and Communications Director. And Mark has been here for 20 years. So congratulations and thank you very much for your many years of service. I know that um, you've, you've made a, a big impact on our, on our IT and really brought us into the, into the next century. <laughs> it's been fun. It's bittersweet tonight. As you know, I did fit my retirement notice in. So uh, it's my last recognition for uh, time spent here. But loved every minute. Still love it. It's going to be great. So thank you. 20 is a good one to go out on. Oh, it is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Funny side note, the city manager that hired me was Chuck Coward, and he asked me to stay three years. So if you have a problem with me, he checks either your hero or your... <laughs> <laughs> We have one more, but he is on the way. So I think we will, we can just, we have a couple things that we can move on to and circle back to that. So next up is our um, public comments for non-agenda items. Is there any, I don't, any public comment for anything that we do not have on our agenda tonight? In the room, don't see any, anything online? Okay, no public comments. Next up is our commissioner reports. So commissioner Toth. Um, I just want to wish everyone a very happy new year. And that's um, basically the, all I have for today. Commissioner Doctor. And I echo the uh, happy new year to everyone. Um, also want to mention that uh, this Saturday, January 8th, we are doing Beautify TI and uh, People can register online, the city online, if they'd like to do that. Uh, hopefully we'll have a good turnout and be able to continue to beautify our parks. That's all, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Commissioner Partridge. I wanna wish everybody a happy new year uh, and also remind our residents that we have uh, children's tennis clinics starting for this winter season at Treasure Bay. Um, you can find all the information online. It's my understanding we have a new tennis pro to work with our kids there. So we should have an exciting new innovative program. So get out there, check out the website, and get the kiddos playing tennis. Wonderful. Commissioner Wetzel? Uh, yes. No, I just want for everybody out there who is experiencing um, some hardships from the Duke Project and the Frontier Project that are going on on Treasure Island, if you've had... Um, it's been uh, pretty rough out there um, with the road closures and trucks and working all hours. But if you have any damage to property, contact me. I have the email, the liaison contacts for both um, companies. And um, there will be more projects that are happening in January. This is a springtime project. Um, and uh, this, I think that's about it. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, for me, I don't really have anything to report. Just echo also Happy New Year. And I think that Beautify TI opportunity this Saturday is a really great, great opportunity to give back to our community. I know that we had a good success the first time around. So we're looking forward to building on that and hope we'll have a lot of people come out. You just need to show up and um, we'll, we'll provide everything you need. All right. Next up is our approval of minutes. Looks like we have um, minutes from December 7th, so would someone like to make that motion? Sure. I make a motion that we approve the December 7th, 2021 City Commission meeting and workshop minutes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Any public comment? All right. Roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. 
Commissioner Doctor. Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. All right, now we'll jump back to our um, recognition section. Um, we have our 2021 Employee of the Year, who's just walked in the room, who we'd like to recognize, um, Officer Cody Melander from our police department. Um, so congratulations and thank you very much um, for your service and um, congratulations on this, this great honor. Chief, do you want to say anything? Once again, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, Cody is an integral part of our agency. Uh, he's really stepped up in this last, last year and a half, becoming a field training officer, training some of our new officers. He's also an acting supervisor, and police work being what it was, he, that's what he was late here because he was just handling a late call. And that's what happens. You try to plan the best you can, and then something jumps up, and that's the nature of the, nature of the beast here. But uh, he's really stepped up. He's uh, dedicated um, to TI and our mission, and uh, you will recognize him as our Marine officer who does just as much education as he does enforcement out on the waterways. I know everybody, including myself, really appreciate having him out in the water, and he's going to be out there a lot more in the upcoming months. So we're really excited about where that program is going. Okay, moving on to our consent agenda. We just have one item on consent tonight, which is approve amended city commission meeting schedule for 2022. So we have a, do we have a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda as it stands. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any um, public comment? All right, any discussion? Roll call please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Okay. Items of business. Our first one is Ordinance 2021-22, second reading and public hearing of our fireworks ordinance. Chief Bars? Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Glad to be back with you again. Uh, no change from the first reading. However, I did want to report that we did have the show at 50 Dolphin Drive uh, the weekend of the 18th. That fireworks uh, show was launched from the water. Officer Melander and I were actually out there. It went off safely. There were no issues. Um, the, the person who pulled the permit for that one voluntarily complied with all of the stuff that we asked her to do, which was basically everything that's in this new permit. Um, so we had a really good safe show, just a kind of a dry run before you pass the ordinance. So no changes, uh, just here for a second reading in case you had any questions. Can you read the ordinance title, please? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> ordinance 21-22, an ordinance of the City of Treasure Island, Florida, pertaining to the restriction on the sale and use of fireworks, amending section 22-3 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Treasure Island, Florida, to codify the authorization process for the use of fireworks displays providing for separability, providing for conflict, providing for codification, and providing for an effective date. Okay. Any questions for the chief? <clears throat> All right, um, we will open the public hearing. Is there any public comment on our fireworks ordinance? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing, and I'll entertain a motion to approve this. Sure. I move to approve ordinance 2021-22 to codify the authorization process for the use of firework displays in the city and the second reading and final public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion or comments? Um, just briefly with it, um, I just had a, um, some feedback on the um, private display, not negative feedback on the private display to that in particular, but just some citizen concerns that it private displays are going to become the norm and just wanted to um, reiterate how many hoops we do make a person or entity jump through and to get that that it's a very expensive process that it's um, 
very complicated, um, that it involves a lot of parties and safety is the first concern of it. And um, if, if anyone wasn't aware, we did require that notice to be expanded to, it was a half a mile radius of anyone within that um, radius. And so those conditions will continue to be implemented as it goes forward. And um, for everyone that I talked to who's within the city, this was the first private display that they had really known about. Um, so it's not something that's going to be a regular situation and that as a commission, people do have to come, our entities will have to come and um, we will have to approve it so that it's, um, this is not going to be the norm to have private displays all the time. Absolutely. Any other comments? <clears throat> all right. That. Can we take a roll call, please? Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Todd? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. All right. Next is Accept American Automobile Association, AAA, 2021 Florida Traffic Safety Grant. And that's us again. All righty. Yes. Um, this was our um, life safety educator and uh, part-time administrative assistance idea. She applied for this grant with my approval. Uh, it is a $700 grant designed for us to purchase uh, bike lights, bike helmets, reflective vests, that type of thing to be distributed at public safety events. Uh, we intend to do one in uh, conjunction with the police department right before spring break. It's, it's a real focus on pedestrian and bicycle safety, the way they interact with vehicles, in particular on Gulf Boulevard where we've had some issues. So it's just a proactive approach to, you know, to push safety before they have to call 911 for an issue. So um, we urge that you accept the grant. It's uh, actual dollars spent up to $700 and it'll be a reimbursing grant. Wonderful. Any questions? No, I think it's great. We definitely need as much safety as we can out there. Yeah, great work. Ed, do we have a motion? Sure. I make a motion to accept the AAA 2021 Florida Traffic Safety Grant for the use in public safety education activities by the fire department. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Please give her our thanks for finding that grant. Yeah. It's a great, cool. great opportunity and great initiative taken by her. Um, all right, any public comment? Hearing none, roll call please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Thank you. All right, next is approved city manager purchase authority purchase authority of $40,000 for auditing services for fiscal year 22. Good evening and happy new year. So we are requesting a commission approval for the city manager's purchasing authority of up to 40,000 for the city's auditing service during FY22. And as you recall, we issued RFP on behalf of the auditor selection committee and the commission awarded the five-year independent auditing services contract to Carr, Riggs, and Ingram. <coughs> the audit of the city's FY21 financial statements, it's going to begin in a couple of weeks, and it's usually going to last until um, through the end of March. So we will not have any single audit for the FY21 financial statements, but we may need additional services with everything going on with our bar and things like that. So to be safe, we are asking um, for the authorization of up to 40,000. And the schedule for the fee schedule is um, all the way in the back of the executed contract. Any questions? No questions? All right, we'll entertain a motion then. I move to approve the city manager purchase authority of $40,000 to Carr, Riggs, and Ingram LLC for the purchase of fiscal year 2022 auditing services. Second. Okay, any discussion? Right, hearing none, any public comment? Okay, roll call please. Did you? 
There was, I'm sorry, was there a second I didn't hear it? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Item four is approved city manager purchase authority of $360,000 for building services for fiscal year 2022. Thank you. So this is a request for city commission approval for the city manager purchasing authority for up to $360,000 for empty Causeway and Joe Pay Inc. building services and there's contractual obligations for the fiscal year 2022. Uh, this amount was already adopted by the city commission during the fiscal year 2022 budget cycle effective October 1st, 2021. Uh, as you know, we have two contracts now. We have the empty Causeway contract which we, uh, they provide for our primary building official and our inspectors, and they also offer uh, supplemental uh, services such as permit checks, planning services, and code enforcement on an as-needed basis during the high peak times. Hopefully we won't have any more. <laughs> uh, on June 16th, 2020, the city awarded a five-year contract with two one-year options. Joe, Pay, Joe Payne Inc. provides for supplemental services such as permit technicians, but can also provide for additional building services and code enforcement officers on an as-needed basis. And that contract was awarded May 18, 2021, also a five-year contract with the two-year one renewal options, um, mutual agreement for both of those between the city commission and the um, contractors. Is there, are there any questions? No questions? No. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve and authorize city manager purchase authority up to 360000 for M.T. Cosley and Joe Payne, Inc. building services for fiscal year 2022. Okay. okay it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Well, I was just going to touch on a little bit. I know there's, I've talked to some residents out there and some business owners, some contractors that work in the um, city, and we've, I think, all had conversations with the city manager about the possibility of, we've been looking into outsourcing our, some of these services to the, to the county or moving them to um, MT Cosley's office, um, but we've kind of, the recommendation now is to continue with the, the methodology that we've um, been going with. So we're going to stick with that. And I think we really owe that ability to Kathy and her team for really um, turning around the department. I can say almost a, about a year ago, um, it was a, a far different scenario. And we had very different conversations about um, MT Causley and Safe Built um, in prior years. And I think they've hope they seem to have stepped up as well. Um, so thank you to your, your team. I very rarely hear of any complaints at all anymore. Um, so it is a, a night and day difference from about a year ago this time. So I know that you guys have been very hard at work doing that and it does not go, has not gone um, unseen. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the compliments. All right. Get that along to my staff. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, any other comments? All right. Any public comment? Hearing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Todd? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Thank you. All right. Item number four. Item number five is approve an addendum to the grant agreement with the Tampa Bay Estuary Program to complete a living shoreline and water quality improvement project at Treasure Bay. Stacy should be calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we can.
Wonderful. Any questions for Stacy? All righty. I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the addendum <laughs> to the grant agreement with Tampa Bay Estuary Program for the completion of a Treasure Bay Living Shoreline and Water Quality Improvement Project. Okay. Any commission discussion? No, I think it's great that we, they've offered us. They think our program is that highly desirable that they're get, providing more funds for it. That's mm -hmm. just awesome that we can protect our environment through this living seawall. Absolutely. And okay. it's definitely a cost-saving approach to what we needed to tackle. So it, that's come at a great time for us. Absolutely. Okay. Any public comment? All right. And none. Roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge. Aye. Commissioner okay. Wetzel. Aye. Commissioner Ta. Aye. Commissioner Doctor. Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Item six is approve work authorization for infrastructure consulting and engineering in the amount of $38,020.59 for seawall repair design services. Any questions? This is something that was budgeted for, correct? <coughs> okay. I'll entertain a motion, please. Sure. I move to approve the work authorization for infrastructure consulting and engineering in the amount of $38,020.59 for seawall engineering services. Second. Any discussion? All righty, any public comment? Okay, roll call please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Ta? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Thank you. Okay, item seven is approved city manager purchase authority of $200,000 for the execution of a purchase order to BDL Services LLC for trenchless sanitary and storm sewer rehabilitation services for fiscal year 2022. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Happy New Year. Um, <clears throat> every year we have about uh, 700, or I'm sorry, $525,000 that we use for lining of mains laterals or manholes or combined of all of them. The last couple of years, we've used most of our money on laterals and la uh, lateral, uh, Gulf Boulevard laterals and also of lining the main line on um, Gulf Boulevard. This uh, company, BDL Services, all they do is line laterals. So we've hired them to uh, continue videoing, cleaning, and lining laterals on Gulf Boulevard. We believe that 200,000 at this point will cover the remaining portion of the North Gulf Boulevard and a portion of the South. When I talk about South, I mean South of 107. Um, 
this is a very cost effective way of, of, uh, of fixing laterals. If you don't line them, you're going to dig them up. If you dig them up, it's about three to four times the amount of money. So if we can, ladder, if we can line the laterals, this is the most cost effective way. So um, the other portion that we have, we have another contract uh, that you approved, I think, a couple of weeks ago. They just do the main lines, so they don't do laterals. Two different types of companies, two different types of equipment. So that's why we have two contracts for lining. One for laterals, one for the main line. And this one is just $200,000 for um, the lateral lining. And uh, yes, this was budgeted. Okay. Any questions? Okay, I'll entertain a motion, please. Sure. I move to approve city manager purchase authority of $200,000 for fiscal year 2022 for trenchless sanitary and storm sewer rehabilitation services with BDL services, LLC. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No. This is, um, the lining is, uh, we're, are we seeking state funding for assistance with the lining? Is there a, do we have an appropriation request for that? Yes, we, we have. And that would off, would that go to the wastewater fund as that well? That would go to the wastewater fund, correct. That would offset, potentially offset this, or? Well, it'd be next would, year's budget. Okay. Yep. This year's budget, we have the lift station number three. Gotcha. Okay, any other comments? Okay, any public comment? All right, roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Toth? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item eight is approved city manager purchase authority of $159,000 and or $780 to include contingency for the city facilities connectivity project. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, this item uh, seeks spending approval for a, a significant IT project, uh, creating a, a city-owned fiber network uh, among our uh, downtown facilities. Uh, I'm going to let Mark talk about some of the technical aspects of the project in a moment, but I wanted to kind of go some, give a little overview for some of the uh, purchasing side uh, of the item. Uh, the vendor, uh, Comco, is the approved vendor for this region uh, for the uh, State Department of Management Services contract. Um, and the city executed a piggyback agreement with them last year, uh, formalizing our relationship for their uh, work that they're gonna be doing in the city center. So this kind of ties into a little bit of that project uh, to basically getting fiber uh, to this side of the city. Um, they're also one of the subcontractors at the city center, like I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So they should uh, actually absolutely be able to plug into our operations uh, fairly easily. Uh, the prices sourced from the state agreement represent uh, fair market prices uh, for these services, uh, which should uh, generate a pretty rapid return on investment. Uh, I believe this is the uh, this purchase is in the best interest for the city and uh, recommend its approval. Uh, and with that, I'll let Mark talk about all the uh, fun technical aspects mm -hmm. of. Uh, of this fiber project. All right. Uh, good evening once again. So this project will essentially create a fiber optic backbone between the three major properties here. Uh, what we currently call the City Hall Complex, which is here, which is fire safety, the garage, the lift station, and all the facilities located within this property. The second property is the Treasure Island Park, which is where the community center is, and the Third property, of course, would be the, where the new city hall is. The uh, fiber optic backbone will have the bandwidth and capacity for all of our data, our telephone, uh, all of our security video, uh, internet access. We only need one internet, internet access port for the entire city as opposed to each location. Um, all the wireless APs will connect, and there's some other connectivity issues that we have, still some uh, standard uh, communication lines like to the county and to FDLE and so on and so forth. And again, we'll be able to share those across the backbone, sort of like we do today any, locally. 
uh, the fiber cable will be undergrounded and it'll have three uh, junction boxes, one junction box located in each one of those uh, properties. Don't have the exact location. We're gonna wait till the, the final moment sort of to, to place those because we want them to be strategic. We know that this building isn't gonna exist here. We're not sure where some buildings might exist. So it will be located someplace strategically here and again in the other two locations. Uh, and this will allow in the future for uh, both a simplified and a more economic way to, if we move a building or if we create a building or, or something changes, we're changing back to that, that central point as opposed to what we have to do now, which is a home run for everything that we do with the, with the cable. And I'll get to that in a moment. That is also causing us a problem because of how we're currently uh, our current fiber optic backbone is. Using this methodology, the uh, I, I explained that again. It's going to be subterrain, subterrain boxes, so everything's underground. Some other cost considerations. Uh, one is we have a, a thirty-six thousand dollar project to eliminate this building from our network <laughs> because when it, uh, in nineteen ninety-eight we put a fiber optic backbone in, it was. Uh, it's located right here in the back of my office. And from here, there's single shots of fiber that go to all the buildings and necessary places. So we can't turn the power off this building <laughs> until we redo this complex. And that was a $36,000 project. This project essentially eliminates that project. The contractor says, well, what we can do is, and exactly how I explain the future, we're gonna put that centralized box, we're gonna run three or four cables necessary to get today up and running and uh, not have to worry about replacing all the fiber here. So there's a $36,000 uh, uh, savings, not savings, but uh, a cost that we won't realize because of this project. Hmm. We also went out to uh, two vendors, Frontier and uh, Spectrum, and said, what would it cost to get what's called a Metro E or uh, it's fiber optic, uh, lease fiber optic. And both came in about the same price, depending on certain things that ranged from 1800 to 2200 I used 2000 as an average, and that was 2000 per entry point. So if we just connected the new city hall with the police department, that's two points, or $4,000 a month. That's $48,000 in two, real quick. So uh, this project will pay for itself in less than two years from uh, eliminating that. So it, there, there was no, there was really no guesswork. Do we lease this or do we put this in? And additionally, currently fiber is rated for about a 40 year lifespan. Uh, it's usually destroyed by a backhoe long before it, it runs its uh, end of life. The funding for this is uh, out of the general fund. It was a CIP project that was approved in, in the budget. Uh, the total budget was $171,000 and it covered three different aspects of communications, the fiber optic backbone that we're talking about tonight, and two projects in the new building to complete the network infrastructure in that building. So it's all part of that. The one cost uh, that is a little higher from the original um, quote that we had was from back in April, and it were about $6,000 higher with the latest quote, and it was all due to material uh, cost. The material cost went up. There's no change in scope and there was no change in labor. It's all change in, in uh, material. And I think that we're good now for 30 days. So this should be, this book should be now executed. We'll be up within those 30 days and those prices should be, be good. And I believe that's it, unless I can answer any questions. Okay. Any questions for Mike or Mark? All righty. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll entertain a motion. Sure. I move to approve city manager purchase authority with COMCO Communications Installation and Services, Inc. in the amount not to exceed $159,780 for the installation of the downtown city facility fiber network. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I just want to say I think that they've done uh, all their homework. You know, I've been in the uh, cable television business for 35 years, and, um, you know, it, it's great that we're able to build our own hub, our own network, and uh, basically a, a two-year payback, it, it's, uh, it's going to be well worth it. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Public comment? 
All right, roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Todd? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. Item number nine is approve a contract amendment with New Vista Builders Group and authorize city manager's purchase authority of $55,000 for a generator switch and the electronic sign for the city center. Hello again. So we had hoped that both of these items would be ready for you tonight. The attorney for the contractor um, was sick and they were out and unable to review the amendment. So we're only going to be asking that you approve um, a portion of the motion for the purchase authority for the items that I'll explain. Um, so a generator is needed at the city center because the existing battery backups for the city servers only last about two hours. And so without a generator, the city's communications would be um, unavailable after that time. So the proposed fee of a portion of the request of $25,000 of it would cover the installation of the panels, circuits, and wiring to the third floor server room and the installation of an exterior transfer switch. And that would be done by one of the city's electrical contractors, USA Voltage. The other portion of the request is for the repurposing of the existing city hall electronic sign. The sign is still really working well um, and it can be relocated to the city center site by the company that originally provided that sign. Um, and so they've provided an, they provided a design for us to look at and that's an attachment A and the fee for them to move that sign and to repurpose it and to build it into a monument style sign is about $30,000. And these items were um, funded in the adopted FY22 budget. Um, and so if there's any questions, the total request is just the purchase authority for the 55,000 to cover the generator and the electronic sign repurposing. Okay, any questions? Um, oh, <laughs> go ahead. Well, I just uh, received some comments on the sign. I sent an email out um, and so I'm, I'm not sure, I, I understand the cost of construction going up, um, but there were a couple that I, um, after I received the comments back, I thought, oh, these are some, some very good points. Um, so part of it was the aesthetics of it, that it looks very um, New Englandish. some people said British, um, it just doesn't look very uh, tropical or match the decor of the city center. Um, one comment was that the center is um, spelled C-E-N-T-R-E on the thing, so I know that's just an aesthetic <laughs> thing, or you know, it's something that can be easily changed, but um, you know, it kind of went to the um, New England type style of the sign with the bricks and 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 that thought brought me to thinking is i know that we are potentially looking at a new sign to the entrance of treasure island that that's something that that may come up in the future and we have different signs in different places and should there be some continuity among those so i'm not i'm definitely not um against the sign on it but i think that um you know, some of those things should be taken into consideration. The second portion of it was um, that it wasn't very creative um, in that and that it, we have a lot of local designers. I'm not sure, I, I don't know if it's in there where these, um, where the sign designer is from, but, you know, is trying to keep something local I know that the money's already spent there. These are things I want to bring up for discussion. I don't know if um, I, I brought some of this up to Stacy. If there's, you know, some answers for if we can, you know, look at some revisions within that. If um, depending on how the rest of the commission feels. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Yeah. The other comments that I got also were the aesthetics on the outside. And also, how long do we think the inside is going to be good for if we reuse the sign that's been out here <clears throat> for a while and it's been up in the salt air? If the inside's going to be good or we're going to just end up putting it there and then finding out it's going to die shortly right afterwards with the electronics in it. Stacy, do you know the lifespan of our current sign, how long they usually last? 
I was just, Mark might have more information than me. I was just looking over the specifications and the quote, and it doesn't give an additional lifespan. I know that with the move of it, there are some refurbishment and um, replacement of some of the electrical panels in the sign that goes along with that. Um, but I don't have the lifespan. The only thing that I did want to mention is that the original quote that we received um, was a few thousand dollars less than the quote that we have now. And the quote that we received most recently was um, given to us on December 15th and is only good for 20 days due to the continuing material escalations. Um, so that's the only issue with going back and redesigning, even though we can certainly look at that. So to, to somewhat answer the question about the electronics and salt air, uh, they're terrible. <laughs> we all know that. We live that. I can uh, specifically talk to this particular sign. Twice since we've owned it, we had to replace the internal uh, uh, electrical harnesses. And th they're designed that way. Uh, we did it this summer. It was around $2,400 to replace all the internal cabling. So, and we've done that twice since we've owned the board. Uh, I'm saying that we probably got three to five years out of each cable harness, and uh, that was the cost, that $2,400 was the cost of labor and parts. I think the new sign was, remember how many thousands of dollars that sign was? Yeah, we exactly. Uh, but it's substantially less than a new sign. I'm guessing you're going to get at least two or three more cycles at that Twenty-four, twenty-five, three thousand dollars range before the sign would have to be replaced. Um, and it's current technology. Uh, they have the panels always get better every year, but we're still using the same technology as when it was purchased. And did that this helps. vendor, like, I'm assuming based on them giving a quote to move it, they've looked at the existing sign to make sure that it is that in good enough case? shape to I'm be to, to, to be moved. I didn't look at. Maybe we could get a price for a new sign and just give that some thought to see what the cost difference is. What was the cost for the brand new one? I, I don't remember. It, it was uh, 80000 I mean, it was expensive. It was a big cost. <coughs> Stacy, do you know if they, when they gave us this quote, I, if they <coughs> took a look at yeah. the existing sign to make sure that it can be moved like yeah. you're saying it can be yeah that's why they are a local company but that is why we're suggesting that we sole source because they did provide the original design and the upgrades to the sign since then so they're very familiar with what we have and um, how it can be reused um, yeah my thoughts were that I it it just looks very different than any other signage that we have um, throughout the city and I know we may take a look at changing that and I but I don't know quite how you can make it look and feel more like the other signage that we have but um, do we do we want it know. to look like other signage I'm not so sure I'm yeah I don't know old-fashioned 70 signs and I know a lot of our residents didn't like them when we uh, got them so maybe this would be um, a time for us to look at redoing all the signs not that we do them all right now but roll right. out some sort of design because I think continuity is important I think it's a staple to any city and um, I but again I don't want to match to signs that I already know a lot of our residents don't right. particularly like um, but this would be a good opportunity I don't think we have any rush on this I wouldn't think if we could get maybe some other sign designs um, maybe something more beachy and look at maybe a grand scheme of changing signs. Yeah. It just seems very modern to me. Like, it kind of looks like the, the building. I could see why they did it. It does match the building. Yeah. But it doesn't have any beachy flair to it, which, you know, maybe they could add. Maybe they mm -hmm. could work with this and add some kind of beachy flair to it. But I think, our, you know, it is time to update our signs at some point. They're a bit dated and very 70s looking. Hmm. Um, may, other may I ask, does the commission like the monument look as opposed to the the look that it is today? Um, is that the direction that we're still going to go? I like that. So you mean like down on kind of a street level street level as opposed to raise up in the air on a pole? Correct. Oh, I like this. I do like the lower level, the street level. Um, 
Yeah, it's just um, with that, it does look. It's nice. As, I'm not saying that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just um, you know the the bricks. I think the bricks throw me, and maybe if it's. Well, you maybe know, we could something. see if they could add some beachy flair, maybe mm -hmm. some sea glass or something. I mean, that, that they're designers. They, if we say we like this monument style, but we'd like some beachy flair to it, I'm sure they could come up with some things. Um, what do you guys think about how close it is to a crosswalk, and would that be distracting for drivers? I mean, I hope not, but there is a crosswalk in the picture, and mm -hmm. I don't know about well, the sign statistics near crosswalks, but we already have issues kind of along the same lines my qu other question was is this a is it just a one-sided sign because it seems like you would only be able to see it going south right. as opposed to traffic coming north with the placement in that photo elevation um, and our current sign is two si double-sided right yes yeah. yeah, so I just I'm I'm wondering if that's like the exact placement or and if that if yeah. there's any other options for where it could go so that both directions of traffic could see it I think the idea is that it could be seen from both sides um, there is a little bit of an issue without um, you know getting into the DOT permitting within the um, Gulf Boulevard right away so it does have that setback off of the sidewalk back there um, but the idea is that it would be seen from both angles. It would just be a little bit further back off the road behind that sidewalk. Okay. So it might but it does kind of that angle of the picture might be a little off. Um, yeah, it's just a rendering. I can provide a site plan for the sign as well. If we were to utilize that property there um, between the sign and the city hall for a future fire and police department, would that sign need to be moved? It would not, no. The other okay. question I have with it is, um, it's gray and the building is tan. Um, I don't think they kind of go together. I think, is the building gonna be painted? The stucco portions of the building? Hey Stacy, are we changing the color of the building? <laughs> yeah, I heard. Um, we are. There is a color change. I can't remember exactly what it is, but I can have the architect send the color palette to Creative Designs for the sign. Yeah, that would be good to match. Yeah, I think I agree. I think it's the texture of the sign that kind of throws me off. And it's not beautiful. And all. yeah, what we really want. And I think I've seen a lot of, and I we're kind of getting into the weeds here, but seen a lot of facades on recent home builds that are more like a sandstone looking rather than stacked brick which is what yeah. this kind of there, looks there's like there's even some that contain sea glass and right. shells right yeah. in them i've seen that on some facades yeah, I think that's um, but i think we if we can go back and tell them we we like the monument style but we want something with more of a beachy flair if they could try to give us some renderings in that direction um we'd appreciate it Right. Yes. Yes. And, and, you know, I know that it's the issue with the construction costs going up, but I feel like it is a big commitment Yeah. and may set the tone for what we decide yeah. in the future. It's huge. It'll be the yeah. staple. Okay. And I think it needs to be cohesive to the building. Itself. Absolutely. And something okay. we want to recreate in other parts of our city. We got to really like it enough that we're going to invest in other signs in that pattern and look and design. And I just know from being on vision steering committee for all those years and people want our residents want things that are beachy. They just that that comes through over and over and over 10 years ago. And it still comes through today at community meetings where beach town, they like things beachy. So um, I'm not sure what that means for the designers, but if they could just come up with something that we could look at or a few renderings. Think that would be good mm -hmm. how do you like to move forward at this point it sounds like we have consensus that we'd like to see a different rendering for that should we or a few um, different renderings yeah i would just i would just start over if the commission feels comfortable approving the twenty-five thousand dollar budget so that we can go ahead and start the wiring generator. um yep. the generator into the server room before they finish off those walls and get those panels installed that would be very helpful for the construction process they don't have to take that those components um 
you know, cut into the wall after the fact. Okay. Okay, I can That's do that. that. Yeah, we just we just table the the the, um, sign. the sign and get the the generator hooked up. Well, it hasn't even been no motions been made, so I think as long as we um, just. Whatever your, the motion is, just address the generator. Then we can yep. add another agenda item in the future. Twenty-five thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I move to approve and authorize the city manager's purchase authority in the amount of twenty-five thousand dollars for installation of a generator switch. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. Any public comment? Any clarifying questions from staff to make sure you know what our direction is? I think we got it. All right. <laughs> None. Yeah, and if we could get several renderings, that would be good, or a yeah. few, couple, you know, more than one. All right. Roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge. Aye. Commissioner Wetzel. Aye. Commissioner Toth. Aye. Commissioner Doctor. Aye. Mayor Payne. Aye. Okay, item number 10 is approve a contract amendment with Keystone Excavators, Inc. for the East Causeway Roadway and Drainage Improvements Project. Yeah, so this amendment um, is needed to ratify approved change orders and to add other language that is part of our standard terms and conditions that is originally included for all construction projects. And the amendment has been signed by the contractor and is included as an attachment. As a general update to the project, um, there were pretty significant um, infrastructure delays in the stormwater piping in the beginning of the project that may have some additional time um, impacts. Our funding agreement with FDOT for the 1.2 million allows the, um, the construction um, to go until the end of June. We're trying to keep that as tight as possible. Um, but there won't be any funding impacts um, as long as we complete by that timeline. In the next week or two, you'll see another change to the MOT that's out there now where they'll be closing the 79th Street intersection one side at a time. So for about a week, they'll be closing the, the intersection on the south side. And then the following week, they'll open that one back up and then close the intersection on the north side. So we'll be pushing out a lot of public messaging in the next couple of weeks to alert of the upcoming changes out there. But all in all, we have a great relationship with the contractor. And um, despite the delays in the infrastructure, um, it's moving along well. Okay, any questions? Did, did we in the past request that we have some sort of um, digital sign with dates letting people know about changes and things? I seem to recall, I thought maybe you brought that up, Mayor, and I and I seem to recall that we thought that was important for residents because the stop and read signs are things like that. And I thought, I, I just thought that was something we agreed on. And I brought it up a meeting ago, one of the mm -hmm. meetings when you weren't here, and again, but yet still I don't see one. So I'm just wondering, is that something we still think is important or um yeah i recall that as yeah. well and i think um my question was whether i know there's a variable sign um as you're leaving the island on the right hand side just before the bridge um so i w is that part of the mot only or is that a city sign if we wanted to add messaging like that. Um, so that mess is part of the MOT, and it's thought that the important messaging that you do on those message boards during a construction project is to enhance safety of the project. And so it's generally that you don't want to put up additional information which can distract from the driver's messaging because they only have such short amount of time to interpret those messages as they're driving through a construction site. So we did add the QR codes to the standing signs, but you're right, you pretty much have to be like walking by to be able to read those or to capture that information. Well, it's my opinion that when, I understand the safety concern, but when residents know what's happening ahead of time and they're not finding out when they're stuck in traffic and already late, that is a safety issue for the people working because you have less frustrated drivers. Could we add another variable message board? Um, like at the intersection of um, Treasure Island Causeway and Paradise Boulevard so that you could see that when you're stopped at that light somehow that would be more informational 
and then once you get closer to the actual construction area, then you see that second variable messaging board that has the actual um, safety information and traffic pattern information, but on that first one have more informational um, messaging that could change from time to time, like estimated, I don't know how long it's going to take, what the latest project is, I don't know. Or expect link what are the, what from this date to this date and then we can change it so that people can make their plans accordingly as they're leaving in and out. Yeah, I think as long as you keep an additional message board outside of the immediate construction area, then um, then we can add that additional messaging. But like if you were suggesting putting it on the east side of the east causeway where there's not one now, well, that MOT will eventually flip and that'll become confusing to people as well. But I think that's a good suggestion where, where you're recommending putting it, Mayor. Yeah, I mean, I'm primarily concerned about Treasure Island residents yeah. seeing it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think as you're leaving our island, it would be plenty sufficient absolutely um and yeah expected lane closure dates is good right. i know that's probably gonna i don't know if that's probably gonna fluctuate and change and keep getting pushed back but at least you continue to keep the public as as informed as as of as how as long it's gonna as take. long as it's outside the mot area we can change it we can change it every day if we needed to yeah can we also put it on, um, <clears throat> excuse me, our website? I believe it's on the website I was now. just looking. I didn't see it. That's why I was asking. Yeah. It should be on there right now. Isn't it on the projects page? Well, I mean, it should be right straightforward on the front landing page so people can see it right away. You, well, know, it's actually you can even the, put it's in the Treasure Island, look at the website, and move forward with that. It's just two clicks off the front page under City Projects. What was that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, road work alert. I see that. Yeah, it is right on. But even if we do it for a while, just to let residents know the dates expected for delays, they can plan accordingly. It doesn't have to be out there for the whole project, but at least sure. for a while, just until residents kind of all have filtered through and have seen, oh, it's going to be from this date to this date, you know, and then they'll kind of yeah, I haven't have seen anything like that on the that one messaging board that is there to yeah. expect this. To I've been trying to tell as many people I can it, that yeah, this is going to be several months, right. so don't think that this is a Right. one month project I think that is important for people to know right. so yeah well, even if we put something out there for a helpful. couple weeks that would be absolutely nice. yep thank you okay where were we we had questions we have a motion yet uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a moment. no no motion okay no motion yet oh, wait we're in the elevator <laughs> <laughs> right? Excavator. <laughs> Excavator. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I move to approve execution of the contract amendment with Keystone Excavator, Inc. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, any public comment? Right, hearing none, roll call, please. Commissioner Partridge? Aye. Commissioner Wetzel? Aye. Commissioner Todd? Aye. Commissioner Doctor? Aye. Mayor Payne? Aye. All right. Well, that is all for our regular meeting. So we'll adjourn at 7.05. Do we want to go right into our workshop or do we need a break? We only have three items. I prefer I'm to, go. to go. We can. Go through? Yeah, let's oh, do it. Okay. You okay with that? I have two items tonight. The first one is Happy New Year to everyone. Um, and the second item is... Um, exciting because it's finally come to fruition which is I talked to you all previously about getting a legal extern from Stetson um, we were able to do that so that extern will start January hopefully around January 18th we'll have her until sometime in May and it's probably at least 120 hours worth of work that she will be um, giving the city so I just want to let you know that that's starting and when she starts I'll bring her here to the commission so you can meet Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely.
Um, <clears throat> okay, we'd like to remind everyone that the uh, Beautify TI is this weekend. Meet me in the City Hall parking lot at 8.30 and I'll be assigning uh, jobs to whoever shows up. Um, we should probably get most things done by 10.30, 11. So hopefully we can last that long. Everyone bring water and uh, we'll have refills of the water for you, like the last time. Uh, after the next commission meeting on, I think, the 18th, um, we'll have a joint LPA and comp plan visioning session after the workshop. So it'll, it'll go commission meeting, workshop, and then this uh, joint LPA and comp plan visioning session. And that is all I have. Okay. Next up is discussion. Um, the first item is request to amend the non-exclusive license agreement between the City of Treasure Island and the Madeira Beach Youth Baseball and Softball League. Good evening and a happy new year. On October 19th the, at the commission meeting, the city commission approved the non-exclusive license agreement between the Madeira Beach Youth Baseball and Softball League um, to utilize Bill Lyons um, ball field. At the November, uh, via an email on November 8th, the city staff was notified by the president of the league, Darren McClellan, that the Madeira Beach board of directors had indicated that the Bill Lyons field was unsafe and unplayable. The board suggested the only way for the league to utilize the ball field was to scrape the infield, including the mound and grass, and move back the grass edge of the infield 12 feet. This would allow for the league, um, allow the league to play every age for baseball um, up to, I think it was up to 12 and under and softball for 16 and over or 16 and under at the field. It was suggested that the city reach out to athletic services um, as they worked on the city of Madeira Beach's field conversion and was the most local authority of this type of work. Mr. McClellan at the time had provided a quote from athletic services in the amount of $15,750 to remove the grass from the infield and the sidelines excavate to proper subgrades and haul debris off site, supply and install five loads of clay, rototill, compact and final grade, supply and install two sets of anchors, one set of bases, supply and install one home plate and one pitching rubber and four anchors. Um, the city manager, city uh, recreation park staff met with Mr. McClellan on the 16th to discuss various options for that proposal. Mr. McClellan is requesting that this um, non-exclusive license agreement between the city be amended to include four items. Um, first, on the October, at the October 19th meeting, the commission had approved an expenditure of $4,497.72 for purchase of clay, which is coming out of the Parks and Recreation Contingency Fund. The city of Treasure Island would pay the approved amount for the clay of up to $4,500 towards the proposal submitted by athletic services. Number two, Madeira Beach Youth Baseball and Softball League would pay the remaining $11,250 of the proposal submitted by athletic services. As Madeira Beach Youth and Baseball um, will be paying the $11,250 to renovate the Bill Lyons Field, the league is requesting that the city waive um, up to two years of the maintenance fee and participate, participation fee that is required as part of the non-exclusive license agreement. So that way they could recoup most of their costs that they have put into the maintenance of the field. The Madeira Beach Youth Baseball and Softball League is also requesting that the leagues receive priority scheduling for use of Bill Lyons Field for up to five year period to develop league play at the baseball field. So city staff to reduce costs had suggested possibly removing the clay and the grass and hauling it away. Well, after a lot of research with Pinellas County and Florida Extension Services, um, the cost would be in excess of 5,000 for the dumping fee as well as testing of the soil for eight um, particular minerals that, and that would be only before um, Pinellas County would even agree to take the clay. Um, with that and with the 
staff shortages we have in recreation and in public works, staff would recommend that we allow this proposal and amend the contract to allow for athletic services to complete the work, which can be done in mid-January. And Madeira Beach is wanting to get this work done so they can start promoting their spring play and guarantee that the field you know, would be ready to play and they would you know, be able to have the amount of children. So here we are asking that we amend their contract to include the conditions as stated above. Can you remind us how long the play lasts <coughs> once it's redone? So <coughs> how long the, the, the league would be? No, no, how long the new surface on the baseball field? It's going to have to be maintained annually and, day, you know, every week going forward. And then, you know, depending on where we are and what we see the needs may be annually, it may need more of an overhaul, whether it's, you know, building up areas, um, cutting away more grass, adding more clay. So that's going to be a definite annual, but the maintenance will occur literally pretty much every day, every week before play. And that will be done by city staff. Any other questions? How long has this ground been there? This has been there so a few years ago when we had a lot of play going, um, they were maintaining the clay had been, actually we had removed clay um, because there was an excess of clay on the field. But then the field sat idle for two years with very limited play whatsoever. So I mean up to two years ago, it was being you know maintained and it, we had removed clay because we had the excess of amount of clay that had been there, but I don't think clay had been purchased because if you recall, the Southwest Little League was required to purchase clay for the ball field. I don't believe clay had been purchased in probably you know four to five years. So at least five years, mm -hmm. I expect it to. And this yeah. would, just so, just so you're clear too, right now it has a grass infield, which is what Little League had wanted for their play. Madeira Beach is requesting we remove the grass. So it's gonna have a different look. It's going to be the same that it was prior many years ago when we had adult softball leagues out there with the you know different anchors for different lengths of bases. And so, and then it will be an all clay. There will no be, no, be no grass in the infield. So I just wanted to make sure you, you understand that in case you get questions. So their credit only goes up into the amount that they've put out. Correct but then they want a period of five years for, for priority scheduling? Correct. Okay. And that's so they can build their league, and I understand that. Sure. I just want to make sure I'm understanding yep. it and I'm clear on what's, what's going on. Okay. Any other questions? No. I think um, the clay infill, though, how's that going to do for drainage when we get the heavy rains? It'll be okay, actually, because you do add, like, different mixtures in the athletic services, I'm sure. it. You add different kinds of sand. Um, back in the day, they used to add, believe it or not, cat litter to drain it. But it'll be a mixture that will allow for drainage, and that's part of that leveling and the rototilling, and that will all be completed in this process. Is that easier for us to maintain? Yes. I kind of remember it when it was all clay, but mm -hmm. it's kind of been, I, I thought it was more than four or five years ago. Well, it has been longer than that. When Little League, when we stopped having adult leagues and Little League began using the field, we went back to a clay in field. So it has been quite some time, um, but it was clay when there was adult leagues out there. So this would give us more options too to having on the side some adult leagues as yes. well on to fit into the schedule to mm -hmm. generate more income too. Yep. Can and it be used for kickball? It can. It would be better too because it's a all clay. You have that lip right now in the middle with the grass being there and that creates quite a bounce and sure. just note if you play kickball out there that clay is not coming out of your clothes. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So wear black or orange. 
or don't fall. Um, yeah. Can you clarify the? I read about the concession stand. I can't find it at the moment, but um, so they have use of the concession. They have stand. use of the concession stand, and they're looking to. Um, I had given them your suggestion back before we had um, talked about with ordering pizzas and from, from local, local businesses. Um, I know that in Madeira Beach, I believe they use, it could have been Southwest. It's one of them that used Chick-fil-A, and I don't know which group. But I know they're going to reach out to our various businesses for sponsorships for banners on the fence. Um, they're going to be reaching out to businesses for food for the concessions. I know they want to purchase, and it's not necessarily a refrigerator, but some type of um, refrigeration case that they can put sodas and waters in. Um, so they're looking for that type of thing to get pizzas or right. sandwiches from local businesses. So uh, do you know if 100% of their profits go back to the Little League? It, well, I don't know that 100% that I, I'm assuming it does because one of the ways they were looking to help with the fundraising for this project was to sell, you know, banner and advertising on the ball field fence and the concessions. So I, I know, I can't 100% say that all of it goes back, but I would assume most of it does. Because just like any organization, I like to make sure that the profits are going back to the, the kids or the whoever the organization is for, and there's not a middleman taking like a big administrative <laughs> cut. I, you know, I, I'd like to be clear on who's profiting from the concession stand. And I can confirm that with them. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it goes back to the league. I can't say whether or not there's anybody being paid to manage or are we going to also have the option to have um, different associations should a neighborhood association That's any right. of them want to use the field also have the ability to use the concession stand again it's just pri prioritizing for the ball field and yes we'll get to use the building is still ours the in what's inside the building is half the city's and half theirs so we still own the building and with Southwest Little League, as long as we gave them enough notice and it was an annual type thing, we worked around it. I'd so like to be... If somebody clear. wanted to use the concession stand and have the window open yeah. for themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I just don't want to make sure it's not Yeah, we still maintain it. We just have <clears throat> to work around when they play. Yeah, that's cool. And, I, and is that in writing? Because that's I want to make sure that we're clear on that. Because I didn't see that in here. I how, can't remember how the original working. contract if it was in there, but that's something we can add to the amendment. Because I don't, I don't mind giving them priority to play on the field, mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to give up our rights like um, Commissioner Thomas is bringing actually, up to have community things or use the concession stand. Or because little, I just know from Madera Beach, Little League, they could book seven days a week, mm -hmm. and I, I mean, do they're think pretty busy. We have to amend that because I believe they were to work out a schedule with Madera Beach or with um, Southwest Little League, correct? Now that I think so when we talk about the five-year priority scheduling I'd like to be really clear on what exactly that is okay. that gives yeah. them um, just to make sure we're not committing to something we're not intending what well, we can do and I think we did it with Southwest Little League it's just said unless for city use and you know I mean we could come up with an annual schedule too so we're a little more if we're gonna do softball and stuff maybe you have an idea of when we may do it so we can do it in the downtime because a lot of times they don't play in the summer months they end in you know mid-june depending on tournaments um, they don't come back till september so you know maybe and then they're off i think december and january so i think we can schedule around that as well yeah so i'd like to see uh what what that five-year prioritizing looks like specifically dates calendar what that looks like so we we can because we are going to be maintaining it mm -hmm. so i want to make sure it's for resident yeah. use too and it's not going to be monopolized so and that's part of the agreement i want to be really clear and we can add that i know we had it in with southwest little league and we never had an issue working that out with them you know we would definitely mention we know what weekend the isla capri uses it for you know their yard sale and stuff so we can give them that schedule too <coughs> yeah and publish it on our website so people can always see it I, I have one more question um, regarding the the signs or the like banners that would be for advertising has there ever been an issue 
with those and they stay up during the season right they do dur during the season they come down when they're not playing so they would be down during the summer months and the few months in the winter they don't play okay and that has that ever been a problem having the banners mm -hmm. up they were and then we worked that out with southwest but that is in their contract because okay. we address that okay and they know it too that whenever they're not playing there that the field the signs have to come down Anything else? Should we move this forward and leave it on the regular agenda? I do know that they want, you know, they. I think they're going to try to schedule them for once it's approved to start the work so they can have the work completed for season. Okay, well, yeah, just come back with the rest of the, the couple things and we should be able to put it on the regular agenda and move and we'll it have that. We'll have the amendment by that time and Jennifer's making notes so I know it'll be on there okay perfect all right thank you Great, thanks next item is financial report the preliminary preliminary unaudited fourth quarter fiscal year 2021 hello again so it's going to be a quick highlights for the fiscal year end the financial audit is going to begin here in a couple of weeks and while we don't anticipate any major changes I just want to let you know that this is a preliminary and the finalized report is not going to be issued until sometimes in March so we have eight governmental funds that includes our general fund the other seven are special revenue funds and they are designated for specific purposes and the use of funds are restricted examples are our penny for pinellas and our building fund so we then have three enterprise funds they are for our business type activities for us they are our wastewater solid waste and stormwater fund the fees we collect from the customers are to cover the expenses for these funds so despite everything else that went on this year we had a very good year as far as our revenue collection is concerned overall general fund revenue either met or exceeded projections in each category except for the intergovernmental fund and this is due to the timing of two large f dot grants since we can't collect the revenue until the project is completed both projects are carried forward to fy22 and once we complete the project it, uh, we are going to collect the revenue outside of this we did very well specifically speaking we collected 479,000 over uh, what was budgeted for parking and we also collected 180,000 um, it came from cares act related uh, grants revenue and those were not budgeted and we didn't anticipate those revenues so those were really good things overall general fund expenditures did not exceed the budgeted amounts and once we account for all of the encumbrances and carry forwards we ended the year at 97 percent of the budget so we won't know the breakdown of each category of different fund balance type until we um, issue the financial report but we can say that there will be an increase in our general fund balance for fy21 now for the other governmental funds penny for pinellas exceeded and collected more than the budget we initially reduced the budget thinking that we won't have a good year due to pandemic but we ended up collecting hundred thousand dollars more than pre-pandemic time many projects were carried forward to fy22 county gas tax revenue ended the year with almost 100 percent of what was budgeted and this revenue is as always just continued to have its declining trend and again most of the projects were carried forward to fy22 and building fund building permit ended above target at 143 percent of budget and it was 150,000 higher than you know as things got picked up expenditures ended at 85 percent and our goal was to reduce the, the fund balance that we carry for this fund and i think we met that goal this year and debt service fund and two capital projects funds we created these funds so we can keep track of them separately and it's for transparency purposes and enterprise funds these are 
like I said, are <coughs> wastewater, solid waste, and stormwater funds. The service fees are meant to cover the operations and capital needs for these funds, and revenues and ex expenditures both ended all on budget. So finally, our investment. In general, we keep around $1 million at all time to pay for our operations and invest the rest in either through money market or purchasing CDs and securities. So this year, we collected more interest revenue than budgeted because seven of our, uh, seven of our investments, they all matured and they had higher returns because we bought them back in 2019. So at Citywide, we collected 125000 over the amount budgeted in interest for the city. And with that, um, that's it. And if there's any questions. Thank you. Any questions? No. Heard a lot of positives in there, so yeah. well done. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up is Ordinance 2022-01, our first ordinance of the year um, for amending the fiscal year 2022 budget to appropriate $217,270 from the assigned fund balance and $279,020 from the unassigned fund balances within the general fund and $33,430 from the restricted fund balance within the City Hall Remodel Capital Project Fund for a total of $526,720 for the City Center Project. Hello again. Um, so this total budget amendment request of $526,720 contains um, requests in four categories. The first and the biggest category is the request for an additional construction contingency um, to the construction contractor. Previously, we only had about 6% um, equal to $200,000 available for unforeseen conditions. And this um, contains a request of $461,720, which would get us up to the 20% contingency amount for the contractor, which is more in line with a large renovation project. Uh, it also includes a $35,000 request for an additional fee for the architecture firm. They're overseeing the, um, the contract of the for the contractor and they're doing the inspections. So because of the additional timeline extension that we've had due to COVID material supply issues, um, that is an additional fee to extend their involvement in this project. Additionally, about $15,000 is being requested for additional IT and security contingencies. This would cover things such as additional proxy cards for the doorways and the card reader machinery and um, software for that item and for the um, potential software for the video monitoring. And then a $15,000 additional contingency is being requested for the other items that staff was planning to purchase for the building that have also just gone up over time since we had our original estimates. So those four items make up the $526,000 request. We have run into several unforeseen conditions during the construction period so far. Um, the contractor has been good to, to point them out and not to overlook them when there's um, items that have come up, such as safety structural concerns that have been addressed. Um, but all in all, the architecture firm who we've worked with um, feels very confident that going with a renovation project is still um, has a higher cost benefit than had we done new construction during this time period. So additional funding for the city center renovation project can be drawn from the assigned capital renewal and replacement fund balance within the general fund. For city, commu for city commission approval of this budget amendment, um, the city or the previous budget approval, the city collected this year 217,720, which will be assigned to the capital renewal and replacement fund balance. So that fund balance will be zero for the remainder of the year after this budget amendment but will replenish itself in FY23. In addition to that funding amount, approximately $280,000 will be drawn from the unassigned fund balance within the general fund and from the restricted fund balance in the amount of $30,420 within the City Hall Remodel Fund. While the final audited 
fund balance um, in the category for the general fund um, unassigned balance is unknown at this time. As Junko mentioned, our preliminary calculations indicate that the city collected well over the, red, the budgeted revenue for the time period. Um, and in turn, expenditures also came in under budget. Um, so there are two motions associated with this request. One is to move forward to the second hearing for the budget amendment, and the other is specifically for the the thirty thousand, um, the thirty five thousand um, dollars for the architecture firm, and the additional contingency for the construction contractor. Okay. Any questions for Stacy? What does this um, amendment to the budget bring the grand total for this whole project up to, including the cost when, of the acquisition of the building? Yes. We, did you say including the purchase of the building? Yes. Uh, yes. So it's just over $11 million, $11 million, 12327 Can you say that one more time, please? Yes. Eleven million twelve thousand three hundred and twenty seven dollars. Stacy, that includes the contingency, correct? That is correct. That is with all contingencies. And again, we're hoping that we don't need the full amount That's that correct. we're requesting. Um, we are you know, being very strict with how these funds are spent and making sure that they're justified and documented. Um, this is just getting us to the full contingency in the event that it is needed. Okay. Any other questions? I think um, all things considered um, with the circumstances we're going through with the building costs going up, I think that was I mean, unforeseen, but I think we're still well ahead of the game of where we were contemplating about four years ago when I was first elected to the commission and we were looking at a 20 to $30 million project for a new city hall. So I think um, just over at $11 million is still quite a, quite a good deal. And I think there's a lot of um, unrealized value in when you're just looking at the numbers, um, just in the fact that we took a piece of property that was um, a little bit kind of on the decline and we're revitalizing it right in the core of our, our city um, and also preserving a, a huge portion of parkland that would have been taken up by a new city hall. So I think all things considered, we're still well ahead of the game. And I think this is still um, still the best move for, for the city. Not to mention the property asset has increased mm -hmm. significantly since we purchased because Absolutely. all property has. Sure. So there's sure. definite gain there for yep. sure. And keeping the park too over right. there is just, that's tremendous there with the property. It was yep. a win-win for sure. Okay, we'll move this forward to the regular agenda. All righty. <laughs> Any other public comment? I'm not sure, Mayor, I'm sorry, if you also have to um, approve the motion for the additional um, purchase authority Oh, I'm sorry, that comes with the budget ordinance. Yeah, we'll move right. both of them to the yeah. regular agenda. Thank you. Having multiple mm -hmm. memos with multiple motions is confusing. For me. Yes, it is. Not something we're accustomed to. Um, okay. Well, with that being said, we will go wait, ahead and- Wait, wait, oh. before you adjourn that. Sure. Just one quick thing for direction on the sign. I just wanted, uh -huh. I was just kind of thinking about this. With the continuity is what do you all think if we gave some direction for a proposal that was somehow tied into our bridge and clock tower design like something with we've got yeah. I don't know what the word is kind of it just if there was something that would because that's going all the way just as one of the proposals yeah I like that that's, yeah. okay that's yeah like the toppers that are on the yes. bridge that are kind of like a right right yeah I'd like that and then I think some that sort would of be BT pretty easy for them to some sort mm -hmm. of glass or right. waves or something that stands out for beachiness yeah. but but it has a modern flair too yeah, for our I building agree. i agree with that on and continuity through the whole city is a nice thing to have because then you look at one project 
And that we're going to look at, you know, what we're going to put in front of Treasure Bay as well, and maybe even the Roselli sign in the yeah. future, because that wooden sign's not going to last forever. And I know Paradise Island's looking at signs. They've been looking at it for a few <laughs> years, <laughs> um, and they have the budget to do it. But part of the contention was that they wanted to be more consistent, but not with the old signs, which is why I brought that up. Um, they didn't like the seagull signs and the 70 decor, so they were kind of holding out that we would upgrade our signs, and then they could match towards it. So I think it's a great idea. Okay. Okay. Great song. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Nope. All right, we'll adjourn at 736.